Uh oh, no, no. Look, we on the Grow Cold Show. We gotta give us a minute. One second. We are at the North Carolina Central University TV studio. Thank you. I got it right this time. Give us some love. You gotta give us some love. We, need it. we are recording. What's going on, young lady? How you doing? I'm great. How are you? I am fantastic. My name is Troy Jermaine Johnson. Tell us your name. My name is Crystal Elise Taylor. Well, go ahead on, Miss Elise <laughs> Taylor. Where'd you grow up? Clinton, North Carolina. You are you right here, born and bred. Clinton, North Carolina. Right, yep. Right here. Mm -hmm. Okay, now you are the queen of the city. That's all right. The states. This, my bad. Let me, put, <laughs> let me put some respect. Let me put some respect on her name. The state. Put the eyebrow in the air. I love it. I love it. Talk to us about women in leadership. You know, why is that important? Women in leadership is important, but I think support of women in leadership is more so equally important. Um, women have a lot to say. We have a lot of ideas, and we are strong in ways that some people may not be. And it's important for us to be able to support each other, have the support of people that need the ideas and creativity we have, we hold, and to see culture evolve. I love it. How does it feel to be, or explain to me if that even... Um, takes grip in your life. You are mama Panor, mm -hmm. right? How does that make you feel? Talk to us about it. I'm proud. You know, it's being a mom is already a strong hold in itself to be able to grow from, evolve from, and learn from your child and the experiences that you have. And so, you can use those things to be able to walk strongly in entrepreneurship as well. Like. You know, I have to have patience with my son. I'm a single mom, so it's important to be able to learn from him, to heal, to grow, and to be able to use those same experiences in work and in life. And so it helps me. Um, I'm definitely a mama bear when it comes to my staff and contract contractors that I work with. And so it's a, it's a beautiful struggle because you're always constantly learning through different phases and just like being a mom like you get something good you learn how to do something really well and then the next thing they've evolved to something else and so you have to keep shifting yeah so pivot game got to be strong on both fronts okay. <laughs> yeah welcome to community spotlight brought to you by bro code tv productions and hosted by the bros Join us on this dynamic journey as we shine a spotlight on local agents who are making a profound difference in their communities. These remarkable individuals bring creativity, wellness, and purpose to the forefront as they tackle challenges, nurture their families, and celebrate successes. In each episode, we explore their unique stories and initiatives, offering an inspiring glimpse into the world of community transformation. Get ready to be inspired by those who are leaving an undeniable mark on their neighborhoods. Tonight, we will be highlighting Crystal Taylor, a.k.a. the Queen Curator of NC. Crystal is the genius behind all things music, art, and festivals, bringing her passion to life in every project. As a fourth-generation farmer, she's deeply rooted in her community and championing anything that celebrates and promotes black culture. We got to let people know where we're at, right? Because everybody can't see. So we're going to let them know, Ms. Hicks, you're going to help me out. We are where? D. North Carolina Central University TV Studio with TV Studio Manager Felicia Casey Hicks. Yes. Uh, and Steven Smith. Oh, come on, Steven! <laughs> <laughs> Steven A. Smith. Eagle Fry. Eagle Fry. Right here yes. in Durham, North Carolina, Bull City, stand up. When you hear the word wellness, Crystal, what comes to mind? Uh, when I hear the word wellness, healing comes to mind, um, evolution comes to mind, and consistency comes to mind. Because you have to have all of those in mind when to do that, to, real do, to really do wellness. Like wellness is not just um, committing to something, it's actually living something, it's actually being true to something and having the, the discipline to carry it out on an ongoing basis. Mm. How much of the work that you do plays a role in how you rear your son? Like, I, as a black male, someone once asked me, what does support look like to me, right? As a grown adult, uh, one of the things that I told them is wanting to be heard without being belittled. Mm -hmm. 
uh, support to me looks like opening up a, a safe space to be able to be transparent, to be vulnerable. Well, Mansa, yeah, right, mm -hmm. right. Um, Mansa. How, how, how do you, what do you call it? Mansa. Uh, okay, I thought, yeah, I thought it was a nickname. Okay, does he have Oh, he does have a nickname, okay. yes. Okay. <laughs> how do you pour into him? How old is he? He's five. He's five. Yeah. You know, how do you continue to pour into the young king? That's what his name means in the first place. Mm -hmm. How do you continue to, to, to pour into him? Uh, you know, I, um, Mansa mm -hmm. is a complete joy. And he is a growing little person. Mm -hmm. And for me, coming into motherhood, this is my first child. You know, I was not aware of a lot of things. Mm -hmm. But um, I used to guilt myself for taking Mensa with me all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, farmer's market, Black August, beats and bars, all the things, my contracts. And I learned that I was exposing him to something that is not something that's teachable that in the classroom or at daycare or anything like that. He's never been in daycare. He's only been with me. And Mansa is able to grow and be able to learn people mm -hmm. skills. He's able to, he's selling merchandise at the farmer's market. He is a, what, fifth generation farmer? Yeah. So Mansa is, he's more than just a kid. You know, he's, a, he's the next step of the whole purpose of life for me. And so he um, is very strong. He's very clear about what he likes, what he doesn't like. He's, he's the next you know, entrepreneur coming up. And so it's fun to see him um, watch me and hear me. But I think that's all because, I feel like it's all because I took time to grow, to heal, to commit to myself, well, who I want to be, who I want to show up to be and what my what my north star is mm -hmm. so that way he can learn that for himself mm -hmm. and always be able to use that mm -hmm. in his every day like he everything about his life is intentional mm -hmm. and every room i take him in is intentional and i think that he is becoming more aware of that as he grows up and so the motto that we have this month is, I do the things I need to do even if I don't feel like doing them. Mm -hmm. And every month is a new motto mm -hmm. that he can keep continue learning. And we do that in everyday experiences. If he's doing something he doesn't really want to do mm -hmm. or something happens, he knows that you should do this because it's a good thing even if you don't feel like doing it. That's so building his character yeah. is something that is really important to me because I, at the end of the day, I want him to be a great human. Accountability. Ah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Discover the pinnacle of visual storytelling experiences with Broco TV Productions. From the artistry of photography to the magic of videography, the world of podcast production, exclusive red carpet services, captivating MC services, inspiring speaking engagements, expert panel discussion curation, and breathtaking drone services. The bros have you covered. Elevate your events and storytelling with us. Contact Broco TV Productions now at 919-714-9905 and be a part of our incredible journey at www.brocotvproductions.com. We're here to make any room better. Oh, all right, I'm going to start back up, stay in that room because I didn't start from the beginning, but that's okay because that's what the editor's for. Uh, Kurt, uh, we're going to keep it here. Like this, think of uh, think about what she just said from accountability, the mantras. I want you to lean into that. Uh, I'm gonna wrap around and start from the beginning because uh, the listeners need to know who she is and what she does. I didn't start there. Crystal, we know your name. We know that Bull City, the state of North Carolina. Excuse me. <laughs> Let me back up a little bit is where you do business. But for those that are listening, how do you bless the world? What do you do? I have the fortunate opportunity to be a culture creator. Um, I started my career in 2012. I'm a graduate of North Carolina Central University. B. School mm -hmm. of Business. Um, and I own an underground collective creative agency that supports, uplifts, and protects African American culture and music. 
Um, I'm the co-founder of Black Farmers Market, which is an incredible opportunity for me to grow my fourth generation farm skills. Um, I'm the co-founder of Black Artists in the Park because we care so much about putting together a community that can um, have black joy as resistance. Um, I'm the founder and ED of the nonprofit called Get Happy to help support black community in finding joy in untraditional resources. And I'm a mom. Oh, and um, I'm the curator for the American Music Trail in North Carolina. Well, don't let me stop you now. You need to take a moment <laughs> just to think. That's it. You sure? I'm a mom. Okay, that's absolutely. That's number one. Right, absolutely. Yeah. Biggest job there is. Shout out to all the moms. I was raised by a single mom. Shout out to my mom and all the moms that are holding me down. Yeah. That's why I asked you about young King Manson. So anyway, I love it. The correlation between business and mindset. You know what? I'm gonna back up. What is the most important thing in business to you? Like what what is we talk about character traits as humans, mm -hmm. but in business, as somebody that does business in the state. In the, in the country, right? Let's keep speaking. Okay. What's the most important part to you? To me, I think building intentional relationships with people. I, I feel strongly that my success in my career has been because of all the beautiful relationships that I've created with people mm -hmm. that see me, um, appreciate the work, and want the desire of it to continue going forward. So it's not about the thing. It's about the people driving that thing and believing in their mission and what they want. Um, I have started from a place of like everything that I created, I created it from the dirt. And I was able to meet people that were able to believe in that and have something to contribute to it to help push it along. So it's like a, like a train almost. And so I care about living, obviously, and being able to pull monetization off of things, but I really care more about the opportunity I get to meet incredible people that have incredible stories that we can build off of and support one another and grow together. Power of storytelling. I love it. What you got? I want to go back to you talking about being accountable and hear more about why you chose that to be something that you put into your family structure. Mm -hmm. Is it something that you learned at a young age or is it something that you see as missing? in the world? Uh, I was fortunate to go through a bad relationship <laughs> that taught me a lot about myself and just the world in general. And I think, I feel like um, there, two year, three years ago, I went to a self-development class that was able to help me see the things that I had experienced and how they had kept me in a place that wasn't allowing me to be accountable for the decisions I had made, people that I had surrounded myself with. And that is what spared the whole desire of like having more accountability and fearlessness in life. Mm -hmm. So there is a huge lack of accountability in the world because people have adopted the idea of an excuse or someone else's fault or being able to take control of your life Ownership, yeah. and so mm -hmm. experiences are what they are mm -hmm. and they're there for a general purpose of growth but people have become stuck in those things to be able to have those to make excuses of like why these things don't happen so for me um, it's important to you know like Michael Jackson look at the person in the mirror to figure out what's why how and then making a decision about what your resiliency is going to be for going forward in your life. Like, are you going to stay in this place for 30 days? Or are you going to continue blaming other people for things? Or are you just going to say, okay, this is what happened. This is what I learned from it. And this is what I'm going to do to move forward. So with my child, with Mansa, it's the same thing. You know, if something happens and he doesn't like the outcome of that, we talk about, well, why did this happen? what decisions were made, what things we need, to, what choices we need to make better, and how are we going to move forward to evolve from that. And it's a great experience, and it's not supposed to feel good. If anybody is comfortable in life, I would challenge them to not be. Like, one of the goals that I have in life is to make people feel uncomfortable. 
because that uncomfortable feeling is something that needs to be worked on that on the other side of it is a joyful experience. Thank you for that. Spoken so clearly. <laughs> You're Earlier you said this word, you said finding joy. Mm -hmm. For me personally, a lot of my life, I thought that I was supposed to be chasing happiness. I found out that the better word was joy because happiness always took me to having to do something, having to achieve something. Joy, I can cultivate that within myself at any time if I want to, regardless of my circumstances. Absolutely. Talk to me about why you said the word, why you use the word joy as a culture, and that's what we're going to. Yeah, so joy is something that we have lost um, as a community of people um, and as individuals as well. I mean, I think that we have adopted the idea of going to a certain place to have that, being with certain people to have that, instead of understanding that we are the core center of that because the creator, you know, made us. So it's, it's in us, right? But again, going back to those experiences will deplete those things if we don't tap back into ourselves and the, that higher power. Yeah. So I, I truly believe that um, I am joy. Waking up is abundance. Like being able to see and walk and use my fingers, that's abundance. And everything that happens on top of that, like my clothes, or nice things, that's the extra added part of abundance. So I um, take those things and I just build on top of them and just keep continuously think about them on a regular basis and their joy just keeps growing because some people don't have those simple things that we take for granted. And so um, abundance is breathing and being in this space and then being able to add on top of that is the joyfulness of what we can put together with it. So when, when Black Artists in the Park comes, it's like church because it's all of us being able to come together from the lineage of what we have experienced um, in slavery and being able to say, at one point in time, we wouldn't even, it was against the law for people to be together as black people. But now we have thousands of people coming together to enjoy and then we, you feel that energy of that. Joy is an energy. Discover the pinnacle of visual storytelling experiences with Broco TV Productions. From the artistry of photography to the magic of videography, the world of podcast production, exclusive red carpet services, captivating MC services, inspiring speaking engagements, expert panel discussion curation, and breathtaking drone services. The bros have you covered. Elevate your events and storytelling with us. Contact Broco TV Productions now at 919-714-9905 and be a part of our incredible journey at www.brocotvproductions.com. We're here to make any room better. So, Crystal, this is one of my favorite segments. This is the one where some people give flowers, but we do something a little bit different. But we definitely want to honor you. Uh, you use the word passionate. You know what's amazing is, as I'm listening to you interview, you have this beautiful calmness. However, I knew for a fact that there was passion deep inside of you to be doing and creating as such for so many people. So we want to thank you. We do have our $2 bill here. The whole team has signed it. Everybody in the room has signed it. It says bro code on the back with our initials on the front, Crystal, passionate, and you matter. And the reason why you matter is what you're doing is you're bringing people together. People that, like you said, historically would never be together. There's a beautiful thing in that. And that has such a powerful ripple effect that cannot be measured. So that's why you. you matter. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah. You're not gonna make me cry today. Well, cry, girl, just cry. That's, that's not what we're doing. We're gonna get people to cry. <laughs> <laughs> It's called experience for a reason. But you know this, as you do the work, you don't always think, you're just doing the work. Mm -hmm. Realize sometimes, like, yo, you're really making an impact. Mm -hmm. and, and it's not always, you don't always see it here. Yeah. You want to see it here, mm -hmm. but you don't always see it here, but just realizing that you're, and I wanted to ask you a question. We, we, off, we off camera? So, you go through a broken relationship, right? Yeah. Oh, we're, we're on. Uh, oh, 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 it's recording. Oh, uh, no, no. I asked her off screen.
Oh, I thought we were not going to ask you. Oh, oh, my bad, my bad, my bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let me start over here. Okay, yeah, start over. I'll ask you that later. Well, um, so earlier you were talking about relationships and the power of relationships. Mm -hmm. Why did you mention, because we, we also in the Broco Show really use that as part of our blueprint of business. Mm -hmm. Why is that so important to you? And how is, give me an example, for instance, of how that's worked, where because you had this relationship, it's helped your business. Um, so people go into business for different reasons. Um, and I'm one of those ones that's just not in the business for the money per se. Um, I love doing what I do because I love doing what I do. And I've been fortunate enough to, you know, learn how to monetize the work, right? Mm -hmm. And be really successful at that. Uh, people matter. Mm -hmm. People's stories matter. People's why matters. And relationships matter. And if it wasn't for my professor here, like pouring into me and pushing me to do something bigger, if it wasn't for people that I have met that have done it better than I have, or did it before I have, pouring into me and supporting me, I wouldn't be able to have been inspired. Yeah. And so I look at it in a sense of like, I want to meet people who want to be inspired, who want to do extraordinary things. and. It's my goal to be able to support them in that. And it's difficult at times because, you know, people want what they want. And you don't know what people's mindset is. You don't know what their experiences are, you, the trauma and all that kind of stuff that can make them show up in ways that's not healthy. So it's hard because I have a lot of protection around me as far as people making sure. There's several steps people got to go to to get there's to a, me. There's a gate. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so Which is good. And it's good. Yeah. Because um, my old self would be like, sure, yeah, yeah, you know, here's this, here's that. But um, the people that have poured into me, like Cicely Mitchell, for example, the co-founder of Articool, she and I have had a very interesting relationship, but it's been recultivated in such a way of such a beautiful sisterhood. And she is somebody who I absolutely love, and our stories are so similar and the fight of putting people together and creating things. And so when I think about relationships and why that matters the most, it's because doing the work in entrepreneurship is so lonely. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have people that see you and understand you and will pray with you, that will support you and that will lift you up, like you're not gonna, you can have all the money you want, but you know, loneliness is a real killer, That's you right. know? And that seeps into depression and things of that nature. And then you're changing up what your why is. And so relationships matter because people keep you grounded. And that keeps you on the whole point of where why your North Star is what it is. And I truly believe that I'm not working. I'm just having fun. And it's because of the people around me that have these relationships and we're all having fun together doing really cool things we know how to do really well. Yeah. It's not the same as the next person next to us. Yeah. So. Thank you. Earlier you were talking about going through a breakup. Mm -hmm. A bad relationship is maybe what you said. Yeah. Let's speak to the women out there that are in that space. And it's very difficult to be successful on one end yeah. when you going through that and I want to talk about healing and there's a lot of people who don't choose healing before jumping either be into another relationship um, and not really realizing that first I should heal myself deal with what I got going on before I jump into another relationship with all that relationship baggage Absolutely. let's speak I want you to speak to maybe somebody on campus or just um, women in general and, and give them your advice or your recipe for what you should do in that in that situation. Yeah, I I, I feel strongly about like um, going through something. You know, like these experiences that people have. Like trust. If I'm talking to a young sister, I'm like, you know, trust your experience. Like your experience of a person is what it is. Like you, you're not crazy. You feel what you feel, and it's okay to not like it. And it's not, it's not okay to stay in something you don't like. If your body, your mind, your spirit is telling you this is not healthy, this is not good, then 
re, re, really talk to yourself about that and, and find out why. Um, it's important to listen to yourself, to trust yourself, and not necessarily ask everybody else for opinions and advice, but if you don't like something, if something doesn't make you feel your best, if a person, situation, experience doesn't make you feel full, doesn't bring you joy, doesn't bring you safety, then that's a, that's a reason to walk away from something. And no is a response. Period. Period. Like, mm -hmm. no is a response. I don't like it. What no... No, like, no to anybody because sometimes we feel like well you know family members they're close it doesn't matter say that again it does not matter no is <laughs> a response to anybody <laughs> um i actually have friends right now and family that i'm supporting in these ways of like understanding what true healing looks like and it's not just about like you know going to a therapist or having a good diet it's really about seeking like the spirit within you to really understanding like what your purpose is in life because when you know who you are mm -hmm. when you know when you truly know who you are and what you're here for like when things come around to deter you from that you automatically know it's a mission from darkness to stop you from that yeah. so that in itself is enough diesel fuel for me to be like oh no you're not going to take me off of this course that I'm on and oftentimes when you're when you find yourself in bad relationships for a serious amount of time, that's because it's intentionally taking you off of the purpose and path that you're supposed to be on. And the longer you stay on it, the further you the get further off you your get path. The further you get away from it, yeah. I think that one of the things, as a girl dad, mm -hmm. my youngest will ask me, Dad, what do you think? Mm -hmm. And sometimes she gets mad because I, I say, I don't know. Mm -hmm. What do you think? What do you feel? And I get Absolutely. quiet. And she's like, no, Dad, really. I'm like, really, really? I really don't know what to tell you because I don't know how you feel. Let's, let's get quiet. Let's go for a walk. Let's mm -hmm. not talk. Mm -hmm. what, are you, what are you feeling? So really trying to get her to tap back in. And I think that's what a lot of people need to do. Get less distracted. Yeah. Right? Stop listening to other people when it comes to how you, who you are and what you feel. Yeah. Because how do they know? Yeah, and everybody's experience is different. You know, people, people, people will tell you advice. And that's what it is. For them. It's their advice. It's their advice. So if you take it, you're, you're going to live their life. To what they would do. <laughs> and you would probably do what they would do based off of you not making the decision for yourself. Now, I do take advice, for instance, if I have mentors oh, in, a, sure. in a financial lane, mm -hmm. right? Because that's just math. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to who I am as a person, my intuition, my path, I really have leaned into doing my own healing, my own work, mm -hmm. and knowing myself. Um, and getting quiet and still. Yeah. And and yo, that insight, that yeah. inner power, is going to speak. It's, but it whispers. It, it whispers. It will. And that's yeah. the thing. Like, I don't talk to anybody who's not doing better than me. Mm. If you're not doing better than I am, then I don't. I'm not seeking something. From uh, you me. know what? You just brought something up that I got to bring up. <laughs> I, I, y'all help me. People outside in the crowd too. Y'all help me. Why? Why is it that people that haven't done what you're doing? Or, or have no idea what you're doing, wants to give you the most advice. Social media. Social media. I say that out loud. It's social media. I'm like, why are you kidding me? Like, have you done it? People, right. I, and it's, it's, don't get me started on this. <laughs> <laughs> like, one thing I will say, anybody can have an idea, mm -hmm. right? How you execute that, that's Execution. your business, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And it's frustrating that people have become so, like, hungry for attention, clout, status, money, this like microwave, mm. successful it life, does not work right? Mm -hmm. Without like seeing themselves and who they are and where they need to be and what, the, what they really do need to be contributing to the world. And it's messed up because people think that there's a light on the side of making this dollar and it's not. Well, there is the light that's gonna shine, it's gonna shine that once you get that money, it's going to expose who you are. Yes. You know? And when you, that's why you see all these people now doing all these crazy things yeah. when they get money. Mm -hmm. And that's just who they were. Yeah. I, and you know what I struggle with is I see so many people that do seem like they're successful, but there's no substance. Yeah, but you have to also remember that people are empty. Mm -hmm. And that's why they're filling with these types of things. That's the answer. Because they're empty and they, mm -hmm. they want to fill this void. Ah. And, you know... Um, Choosing my words wisely, <laughs> you know, it's, it's unfortunate because that's when you see 
the the real weakness in a person yeah. and the real things that need to be worked on. Yeah. Because if people are searching so deeply and so you know aggressively for this stuff, that's sh that's showing you like okay, there's some things going on that need to be worked why do you, out. Why do you want this so bad? Yeah, and instead of them looking at themselves and dealing with the ugliness of whatever it is that they need to deal with, and then coming up out of the water like okay, I got this. You can't you can't tell me nothing about what my insecurity certain mm -hmm. things are because I know what they are. That's not your business. It's mine, I love it. and I will manage those myself. Yeah. Thank you. You know, yeah. and then people, but so, but people that are less, their cup is not full. That could rock them so hard to point that out and see it, and so they're so busy working on putting these things up, so that way that. you don't see mm -hmm. because they can't handle. But that's the exact place it. they should be. Mm -hmm. That's the place they should be living. And yeah. I, I tell you this for us as a show and black men. One of the biggest things that we're talking about is being vulnerable mm -hmm. about our weaknesses because you said it earlier. Yeah, it's uncomfortable. Very. For anybody out there, it's uncomfortable. But that's the only place you grow. Yes. And so there are some things that I'm just still figuring out. Mm -hmm. I might, it might look great, but there's some things I'm figuring out. And that's it. okay. You I'm, own it. 100%. And it's yours. You know what I'm it's saying? It's mine. And then you're, whenever it's time for you to let it go, it's gone. Let me ask you this. People don't really realize that people respect that more than, mm -hmm. the, than the fake show that people get on. And there's an energy when somebody's fake. You just feel it, mm -hmm. yeah. right? You just feel it. But when somebody comes in and they're genuine, they're authentic, they're being vulnerable, I don't have it all figured out, but I, I don't know the answer. Mm -hmm. It's one of the biggest things. I don't have to know all the answers. Yeah. But I promise you, I'll find out and let you know versus me lying to you, acting like I know something that I don't. We can go down a whole line yeah. of things for this, but shout out to you, number one, for... Um, from doing your work and healing Thank you. because I and the, the reason I brought that up is I hear a lot of women that will say well they're no good men mm -hmm. I'm out of the dating pool I don't want a relationship and usually in my opinion I feel like there's a somewhere hurt in the past that yeah. they didn't heal so instead of getting back into the game healing and, and going on and not letting one relationship be every relationship because that's not what it is yeah. Just deal with that individual and then move on. Yeah. So. And it's, it's a collection of experiences Absolutely. that have built up in a person's mind that have, they have now like justified this story that they're telling themselves mm. about men or people or things. But there's plenty of good men out in the world. Say again. There's plenty of good yeah. fellas out in the world. Okay? Like, I, tell I, my, I meet them all the time. I hear the people in the crowd talking about, where? Where? Yeah, where? 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 And traumatic, you know. I'm sorry, there, I had there to. Are, but there are so many. But good energy attracts good energy. Sure. Say again. Like good it energy it does. attracts. I'm put on the it shirt. Does. But it, it does, it and here. you're gonna you're gonna continue if you don't if you don't heal, you will continue attracting the same types of experiences in different bodies. Ooh, well said. Like they uh, said. Well said. We'll, we'll end with that. That's that's <laughs> that's a mic drop right there. Trust your experiences. Crystal, thank I you. I hear a Broco show all about personal development.